Just right now at 630, Lexington police are looking for the shooter who they say targeted a man while he was sleeping inside his own home. Disability benefits suspended by the federal government for hundreds in eastern Kentucky are being reinstated. The manhunt for two convicted killers who made a daring prison break is entering its fourth day. I'm Henny Daniels in Dannemora, New York, with the latest coming up. And it looks pretty good this morning, a little fog down toward the south. But other than that, it's a nice start to the day. This is your nicest and coolest day in the forecast. we got some high conditions coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning and welcome into you. I'm Rebecca Smith. It is 6.30. So glad to have you along with us on this Tuesday. Yesterday's rains really helped us to cool down a little bit. We'll see with Micah if it's going to stick around for very long. Yeah, it looks like it's going to stick around at least for today. Now, look, we're going to be on the cooler side. It's still going to be there in the 80s, but it's the cooler side of your seven-day forecast because we got a big heat bubble sliding on in. That'll really ramp some things on up. We're looking at 10 a.m. before this dense fog advisory. Uh, will be taken off and down toward the southwest. That's the most dense fog that you're going to be seeing here in the next couple of hours. Now, down toward the southeast, I'm still seeing some airports with readings of some patchy fog. Just keep in mind, if you're traveling this morning, those usual typical spots, you're going to be seeing that fog. 60 degrees there in the capital city. It looks pretty good. 60 there in Lexington, too. 50s north, 60s south. Kind of depends on where you are and planning out your Tuesday. We stay in the lower 80s later on today. No real rain chance today, but as we slide through the next few days, we stay dry, but it gets really warm. I'll show you how warm coming up in a few minutes. New this morning, it's been another violent night in Lexington. A man is fighting for his life this morning after being shot several times while inside a home on Gerald Drive. That's in the Winburn neighborhood. WKWT's Mark Barber is live at UK Hospital to explain at this point what we know about this latest shooting. Good morning, Rebecca. Police said that the man was ambushed in his sleep. They say he was shot up to four times while he was sleeping next to his wife. Police tell us that the man is now here at UK Hospital in critical condition. Officers tell us that the man was shot around 2 a.m. when someone walked up to his house on Gerald Drive, stood outside his bedroom window, and opened fire. Officers tell us that his wife was not hit. According to police, her son, a young adult, was also in a bedroom of the home, and he was nearly killed. Investigators tell us that the shooter ran up to his window and fired at him several times while he was watching TV. However, we're told he was not hit. Officers say they don't know who pulled the trigger. We're told that the shooter disappeared after he ran behind the house to McCallow Drive. Investigators are now asking the public for help. Just call us with any information they have. We're stepping up patrols and visibility in all these neighborhoods, but uh, just any information that they have, we'd appreciate. Officers tell us that they have a long morning ahead. They say they are still working to gather evidence at the home, and they say they're going door to door searching for witnesses. But again, they are asking anyone who has any information to send in a tip that could lead to an arrest. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Well, the overnight shooting comes days after two separate shootings killed two people in Lexington. Police say someone fired shots into a car on Whitney Avenue Sunday night, killing Montez Graves and injuring his brother. A couple hours later, police say Ronnie Graves died after being shot on nearby Charles Avenue. Family members say he is Montez's uncle. A different late night shooting in Lexington injured three people, including a child. WKMT's Victor Puente is continuing our team coverage live from police headquarters. Over the last few hours, we've learned more about the victims in this case, including how that child may have been injured. Lexington police tell us a man, woman, and child were sitting on the front porch of a home on Breathitt Avenue when a dark-colored SUV drove by and someone fired several shots from it. They say the woman was struck in the foot and the man and child had minor injuries to their legs. They tell us it's possible shrapnel from those bullets is what injured the child. All three were taken to the University of Kentucky Hospital with non-life threatening injuries. That SUV headed in the direction of Price Road following the shooting. Lexington police haven't made any arrests. They haven't released a description of the suspects, but say there were several people in that SUV. Well, this shooting happened around 10 o'clock last night. It's the same neighborhood where two shootings happened on Sunday night. Lexington police tell us they don't have any reason to believe last night's shooting were connected to Sunday's. They say they have increased patrols in that area. Live in Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. 
And new this morning, Lexington police looking for a group of teenagers who beat up and robbed a young man. Police say the 17-year-old was walking down Red Clover Lane off Spur Road about 2 this morning when he was attacked. His headphones, cell phone, and garage door opener were stolen. The teen was treated for minor injuries. Also new this morning, a man accused of trying to rob someone at gunpoint has been arrested. Police charge Antonio Brooks with several charges, including robbery. They say he pointed a gun at the victim who refused to comply with his demands. The victim gave police a description of the car, and they caught up to it at Alumni in Yellowstone. Police think Brooks could be related to several other robberies. Scary moments overnight for a driver who flipped his truck on the interstate. The crash shut down I-75 northbound at the 128 in Scott County. Police say the driver crashed his utility truck, which was then hit by a semi that kept going. A good Samaritan stopped to help, but police say a pickup truck uh, hit the utility truck again and the good Samaritan's car. The driver of the utility truck was not seriously hurt. The interstate is back open this morning. Well, traffic is moving much better on a different stretch of I-75 this morning. Witnesses to Monday's deadly semi-crash on the Clays Ferry Bridge say it was just intense. Investigators say the driver slammed into a barrier on the bridge, causing it to burst into flames. This was a semi. One witness said he tried to help but just couldn't get close enough. I wanted to get out and help, but no, it was a huge flame, so I couldn't do it. I wish I could unsee it, honestly, but I can't. Just really bad. The Madison County Coroner says the driver, a 52-year-old man from Miami, was found under the bridge. Firefighters say they also had to clean up about 100 gallons of diesel fuel that spilled into the river. Well, today the trial will begin for a man accused of sexually assaulting a co-worker. Lexington police say Clyde Sexton took advantage of Melissa Klein Smiley after she passed out at a strip club on Winchester Road in 2013. She died days later. Her husband is now suing Sexton and the strip club's owner. Sexton is charged with sexual abuse and tampering with evidence. Good news this morning for hundreds in eastern Kentucky. Their disability benefits are on the way. The Social Security Administration says people who receive their payments by direct deposit will be paid no later than tomorrow. If you get paid by mail, you can expect a check by the end of the week. Last month, the government suspended benefits for hundreds of people as part of a fraud investigation into Floyd County Attorney Eric Kahn. The government has since decided to restore those benefits. Well, the search for two escaped killers continues at checkpoints set up around a maximum security prison in New York. There's still no sign of the men, and officials think the plan could have taken days or even weeks to hatch. Hannah Daniels reports from Dannemora, New York, where authorities are trying to figure out if the men had help. The manhunt for David Sweat and Richard Matt has now entered a fourth day. Law enforcement officials have fanned out across the state and elsewhere, following hundreds of leads. CBS News has learned investigators are questioning a woman who worked at the Clinton Correctional Facility in connection to the daring escape. Disgusted. I can't believe it. Stephen Tarcia's brother, Sheriff's Deputy Kevin Tarcia, was murdered back in 2002. Sweat was serving life without parole for the crime. I can't believe anybody would help them get out, knowing what they done. Matt was sentenced to 25 years to life for killing and dismembering his former boss in 1997. The convicted killers used power tools to cut through walls and metal pipes before exiting through a manhole three blocks away from the prison. Our forensics investigation unit has recovered uh, some limited cutting tools. We presume that perhaps more sophisticated tools may have been used, but we did not uh, recover sophisticated cutting tools. Investigators say the 170 year old prison and surrounding area had little, if any, electronic surveillance. So far, officials say there are no signs as to where the two escaped prisoners may be. Hannah Daniels for CBS News, Dannemora, New York. Well, security at schools near the prison's also been increased. Associated Press reports that a 2014 report by the Correctional Association of New York revealed a pattern of brutality and racism at the prison. One of three people accused of kidnapping a woman in Breathitt County admits he has hit the woman before. Jackson City Police say the victim met her ex-boyfriend, David Haddix, along with William Gardner and Sharon Campbell at a park. She was then tied up, threatened, and assaulted. She later managed to escape. We talked to Haddix from jail. He said he's been violent with the woman before. I have put my hands on the girl. Not like totally straight up, you know, you beat her down. But, you know, you know, just more or less make her stop and listen, but not during that situation. 
Police say they found bullet holes in the victim's car and a sawed off shotgun. After he was arrested, police say Haddix admitted to robbing a gas station. The two candidates for Kentucky governor agreed to take part in a series of debates, and WKYT will be hosting one of those. Jack Conway and Matt Bevan will face off on October 25th at Eastern Kentucky University. WKYT's own Bill Bryant and WLKY's Vicki Dorch will moderate. The debate will air commercial free from 6 to 7 that night. Let's check to see how traffic is moving on this Tuesday morning. Hope it's off to a good start for you. Here's Officer Don with a look at live drive traffic. As we look at the circle this morning on the inner and outer loops, no delays even past Versailles Road. We're watching that corridor between Versailles and Leestown, and traffic's moving okay. The exit ramps still check out fine, too. Inbound Leestown Road through the construction zone, uh, no significant issues right now, and we'll get a live look at Broadway and High Street. You can see the morning coming to life there, both in and outbound. Uh, traffic toward downtown is actually moving well. Uh, on our Waze map, with an overall picture of what's happening on I 75, across the Clays Ferry Bridge, everything's open this morning. Uh, tragic morning yesterday trying to get in, but it looks like we have all lanes open there. Also coming in from Scott County, had a lane closure overnight on the interstate, but that has since been cleared. You can see on Waze, one of the slowest areas right now is the construction zone at Clays Mill and Man of War, where traffic's backing up. Uh, no, uh, no turns made from Wellington because of that construction zone and a little bit of a slowdown there. We'll keep an eye on that and keep you up to date throughout the morning. Now back to you in the studio. All right, thanks so much, Don. More news from us on the way this morning. You can call it the ultimate food fight. Coming up, we'll take a trip across the pond for a very tasty competition. And we're looking outside 50s, northbound 60s, southbound. We're starting to get that rain on out of here, too. But it's all about the temperatures, no doubt about it. Aren't we seeing 90s for the next few days?